We've spent the last 16 years travelling to countries all over the world to try and better understand their culture, the people and the relationship they have with their cars. Now recently we bought our first French car. We've been driving it, modifying it and even racing it, yet they still seem somewhat mysterious. There's not many of them in Australia, so they're actually quite exotic. So today we decided to come to the heartland of French cars. We're here in France. And if the idea of owning a French car seems bananas to you, well today we're going to peel back the skin and see what's underneath. When you think of France, you may think of classic architecture, cafes in Paris, croissants, bicycles, probably baguettes, but it's the French car industry that is iconic. France effectively invented the world's first full-sized self-propelled mechanical vehicle in 1770, hitting a blistering top speed of two miles an hour. But by the early 1900s, France was an automotive powerhouse and the number one producer of cars worldwide. These days, it produces around two million cars a year. Citroëns, Peugeots and Renaults are exported all over the world and their classic cars are steeped in nostalgia and godlike status by the people that love them. But what's the big deal and why do people love them so much and why is it illegal to modify them? Well over the coming days we're going to investigate this and try and find out and you are coming with us. So we are in a tiny little car park in a town called Shell that's about 40 minutes outside of Paris. And as usual, Marty has bought us a car completely sight unseen off the internet. Yes, I have. And I'm very, very, very excited to reveal to you that it's absolutely not this piece of merde. No, no, no. What I bought is so freaking amazing and I've agreed to meet the seller in this car park and he should be here any minute. We waited and waited and waited. And soon we started to think that maybe he wasn't coming. So using our Translate app on our phone, we decided to give him a call. Um, do, John, do you speak, you speak English? English? Uh, yes, yes, I speak English, yes. Um, we are at the car park. Are you still coming? The, 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 um, the park, parking? Yes. You, you are? Oh, yes. Are you bringing the car? No, I don't know. Uh, today, difficult today. Uh, we, we've come from Australia. It's taken us 30 hours to get here. Yeah, okay, but uh, today I, can, I cannot. Um, because uh, I'm busy, I'm busy today, say, uh, la, la grave. Did you? La grave, aujourd'hui. The grave. What's the grave? Yes, yes, it's a grave. Uh, oh, it's, um, uh, how do you say in English? It's, uh, it's the, the strike. The, the, the protest, the protest. The protest. Oh, okay. Uh, did, we gave, we gave you the deposit, though. The, yeah, the, what? Quoi, l'argent? Vous voulez parler d'argent? On est, en, on est, on a des grands problèmes ici, euh, monsieur, euh, en France. Écoutez, je sais pas comment c'est dans votre pays, mais en France, euh, on a un niveau social, d'accord, et on le descend. Donc aujourd'hui, c'est la grève, c'est tout le monde qui est en on manifeste. Et puis vous, bah, euh, manifestez dans votre pays. Salut Um... <laughs> Shit He's not coming. He's not coming. Great. That went great, Martin. Well done, mate. With no car and jet lag setting in, we decided to go to our accommodation and make a new plan. For this trip, we're trying something different. To better immerse ourselves in the culture of France, we're avoiding hotels and instead staying with local hosts. Real houses in the suburbs with real people. We're meeting Romy the cat, who we'll be hanging with for a couple of days. 
With extremely limited local language skills, it's always fun trying to explain what we do and why we're in France. But after explaining that our car acquisition fell through, it looks like there may be an unexpected solution. So we've just told our host the story about what happened with our car not turning up. And she actually has a spare car that she said that we can use for a couple of days. So we're going to go and have a look at it right now. This is my car. This is your car? This is a cool car. Yeah. This is so cool. This is great. And it's manual. Yes, yes. So this here is a Renault Clio. It All is. I know about it is that it's two door and manual. Never driven one, never been in one, never touched one until now. The steering wheels on the left hand side, it is manual which is absolutely brilliant. I don't know if it's petrol or diesel. I'm going to assume it's diesel because every little car in France seems to be diesel. Martin, I'm going to start it up and we're going to find out. Oh, she's a diesel. <laughs> Sounds like a truck. We've got ourselves a second generation Renault Clio. Huge amounts of resources were thrown at the development of this car during the 1990s, and it was sold from 98 through to 2012 in France, and also exported in huge numbers worldwide. The Clio after this one was based on a Nissan, but not ours. Ours is pure French engineering at its finest. During the early 2000s, small capacity diesel engines were hugely popular, and ours is powered by a 1.5 litre DCI engine, which is apparently turbocharged, but you'd be lucky to notice it. Driving around Sydney, you might spot a few Clios. Driving around France, you can't not see them. They are just everywhere. They're cheap, and if they've lasted this long, that's probably for a good reason. So we wanted the cheapest Renault in France, and in a weird kind of way, we got it, for free. But in exchange for letting us use the car, we're gonna service it and give it a little makeover. I have uh, driven in Europe before. Yeah. And when I drive, there is an automatic modification that gets done. Do you wanna know what that is? Yep, what? You leave with two mirrors, you come back with one. <laughs> I have experience with this. So you just have to keep reminding me. Passenger to Passenger curb. to curb. Passenger to curb. Okay, uh, we're going down to a hardware store to buy some tools because we have absolutely nothing. All right, I'm going to keep you there, Mark. This is good. All right, we're driving in France. We're rin what, what do we it? do here? Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you do. It goes all right. The diesel, not, not bad. bad. Renault. The Renault shop. Sick. We need to go th there and buy some Renault supplies, Martin. We're going into the Renault shop. Not quite a career highlight, but they won't sell us anything unless we want a Twingo or this horny looking European tow ball. This I'm changing mad, gears man. with my right hand. People in America do this as well. It's freaking weird. That's Dude, hot. construction decoration jardinage. Leroy oh. Merlin. Yeah, man. To get sick. some uh, magical supplies. Leroy Merlin. It's just French for Bunnings. Coppers. Oh, the protest. Dude, there's a protest. Oh, and there's police. It's a protest. Oh, there's the police. Go and and you the go to the All right, good. Now I'm going to put my right indicator on <laughs> and run into this car ah. over there. All right, great. Access Magazine. Leroy Merlin. Let's go. I'm keen, dude. I'm so keen for Leroy Merlin. If you're overseas and you can go to a hardware shop, you should go. You get all sorts of other random, like weird stuff, tools. We went to one in Germany. It was the best. Oh, I've Japan. still got tools that I use that I got in Germany years ago and they're bloody excellent. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Leroy Merlin, by the way, but it's a pretty freaking gonna, funny I'm name. I'm just gonna keep saying it because I like the name Leroy Merlin. Can you, all the things you think a hardware shop might be named, yes. what are you gonna call your hardware shop? Leroy Merlin. Most people visiting France probably buy a keyring or a tea towel to take home, but we reckon that tools make the best souvenirs. We need the absolute basics to do some work on this car, a multi-socket set and some screwdrivers. It turns out they sell our favourite Roby Dak Dak here, so we're grabbing one of them too with a battery. After being kicked out by security for filming, we're back in the car to try and find an auto store to buy the supplies we need to service our little Clio. Supreme Les Green Cements, Chasse Le Humidit, Metro et Protoge. How's my accent? One of the best things about travelling is trying to unravel the different ways things work. A parts shop in your country might run completely differently to elsewhere. And actually, these ones feel a bit more like a Japanese store in terms of the products they have and how it's all laid out. Having a French car made in France guarantees you'll be able to find parts, so we're grabbing everything they have. Oil, air and cabin filters, oil as well as some detailing products to get our car looking as mad as possible. Then we're going to hit the road back to the driveway to start working on this mad little nugget. Here's where we're at. 
We're having a Mighty Mods fan meet tomorrow night. It's already three o'clock in the afternoon. So we're gonna get to it, see what we can do to this mad little nugget. We've got all of our stuff. We've been to a bunch of different stores. First thing we're gonna do is just give it a little service. A, because we need to check what kind of condition it's in. B, it's nice to give somebody back their car better than when you took it. If you ever borrow someone's car, please wash it or at least put petrol in it before you give it back to them. And we've also jumped on Marketplace because they have it here as well to find some wheels. So this is four by 100, um, limited fitment, but luckily for us, a lot of French cars are the same. Like it's all roughly the same specs. Yep. Uh, so we have managed to find and some Renault wheels from a later model which look really good. They should be here soon, then we'll go get some tires for them. La première étape de Montreal de Voiture. Yep, I know my French accent is terrible, but I am working on it. While we've got some limitations in what we can do to a borrowed car with a short time frame and within the laws of France, there is some joy to be found in the simplicity of it all. We're on the driveway with the most basic tools in the baking sun in the middle of summer, working on a nugget of a car. This is literally like season one of Mighty Car Mods back in 2008. There's no engine swaps or 10 second builds here. It's just us hanging on the driveway, doing some basic servicing. Not only does this mean that we'll know exactly what kind of condition this Clio is in before our upcoming road trip, it also means we can hand back the car better than how we started. We hear from a lot of people that they don't want to start working on their car because they can't keep up with the 2000 horsepower builds of the internet. But do you really need to? If you feel like you're on the roller coaster of Instagram rubbish, disconnect yourself from the face balls, turn your phone off and change the filters and the oil in your car. It's a simple job, throw on your favorite tunes and then go for a drive knowing that you did it yourself because that is what owning a car is all about. So I'm just changing the cabin air filter on this and what's required is a five and a half mil bit. Look at that, absolutely tiny. So you've got to put the bonnet up, pull this out, pull this off, and now there's a couple of these to undo, and then a Phillips head screw, and then you can get access to it. It's just weird Euro things, but I'm down for it. As well as a bit of driving around France while we're here, we're also planning on hosting a last minute pop-up Mighty Car Mods meet in Paris, which is why we need a car. We haven't actually told anybody about it yet, mostly because we don't have a location. So that's something that we have to try and work out in the next 24 hours before we announce it on social media. You can't go to a car meet with a dirty car, particularly if it's a car meet that you organised yourself in a country on the other side of the world. So we're going to clean up our mad little Renault Clio, give it as much love as we can with the basic tools that we have. thing about these cars is that the front guards never ever rust. Why do they never ever rust? Because they're made out of plastic. When we found out that we were going to be coming to Paris, we thought, you know what, we're going to need some local help, but how are we going to get local help? I'll tell you what we did. We got some email addresses from people that had bought things from the Mighty Car Mod store. We thought if they bought something, they're probably a fan. And this is Francois. Uh, bonjour, Francois. Hey, Moog. Hi. Ça va? Ça va, ça va bien. Ça va bien. Uh, bienvenue en France. Oui, oui. Uh, je suis un très dromadaire. No. Un gros boss. No, no, no. Ça, ça un va. petit pipi. Il va falloir travailler en français. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what we did is we sent a couple of emails out to people that had bought things from the Mighty Car Mod shop. Francois responded, what did you actually buy from our shop? I bought uh, the t-shirt, Mighty Car Mod basic one, and then I bought, you know, that poster with all the cars of Mighty Car Mod signed oh, by Oh, that's a rare one. Marty. That's a rare one. Yeah, and you can see it on my channel. It's on the fridge in my garage. Yeah, so Francois also has a YouTube channel. He's an engineer, but also a musician. Uh, his channel is Garage Bagnol a Rock and Roll. It's Garage Bangers and Music, which I'm totally down for, of course. Anyway, we sent you on a mission yes. to get us a bonnet yes. in your Tesla, and Here you have it found is. one. I've been to so, the breakers, and thank you look, very much. Look what I found. Now, here's the crazy thing: for such a rare, exotic, and beautiful car as the Clio. This here was only 50 euros. That's the equivalent of like 80 dollars, yes. which is amazing. In Australia, it would be triple that. Yeah. I've got it. That's so a good. good. One. Um, you know the wheels on Marketplace I messaged you about? That those wheels? Yes, yeah. We also yes. have to <laughs> we have to pick them up. All right, then 
See you. Can I you go. get them? And then when yes. you come back, and tonight we will go out for a lovely dinner. All right. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Martin, we've got a bonnet. Yeah. Check this out. Look at it. That was only 50 euros, dude. 50 euros. Awesome. While this car has been lucky enough to be garaged its entire existence so far, the paint is still a little bit sad. But we're going to bring it back to life as best we can with a polish. Using a light cutting compound, this will remove the fine scratches and swirl marks that make the paint look a little bit dull. It won't cut out any big gouges, but it should make it look a lot shinier. Some WD-40 will help get our unpainted bumpers looking new again, and thanks to our new friend Francois, another delivery has just arrived. Oh, yes. Here they are. You got them? All right. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go unbox them. Mad wheels. All right, so, fingers crossed, we have a four by 100. Oh, yes. Look at them, dude. Factory. So they are a factory Renault Clio wheel. Why we go for factory? Well, because it's kind of illegal to modify your car, but also, 4x100, still has the logo on it, and hopefully the offset of this will be right, but we are going from a 15 to a 17. So we need to go get some tires, which is the very next step. But before we do that, we're just gonna quickly whiz this on and make sure it fits the car. Francois, what's yeah. the deal with modifying cars in France? It's easy, it's just illegal. No modifications allowed? No mods allowed. Unless you have specific approved parts? Is it like Germany? Yes, you have to get stuff homologated. You can change wheels if they are homologated. Yeah. Actually, in France, uh, tube certified wheels are or allowed. So yes, eventually, if you have the paperwork done, yeah. it's legal, but and in I imagine, general, yeah, no. I imagine if you're swapping wheels from like the same model, less likely to have problems, do you think? That like if it's, a re if it's a factory wheel? That should be all right, yes. Okay, well, fingers crossed this is all right because we have a factory yes. Renault wheel. Yes. So it's less likely to get attention, correct? They are second hand, you know? Oh, cool. But, uh, you know, they are Good almost, almost new and I think they will, be, they will fit uh, perfectly on that car. As long as we can get tires to fit as well. Yes. Let's see. Let's test fit. It's DAC attack time. It's our little Ryobi DAC that we just bought before security kicked us out for filming us getting their DAC attacks. Listen to that. So many weird little motorbikes here. We saw a quad bike yesterday, a quad bike on the road with a passenger just smashing along, just like, just like, oh yes, this is the torque one where you can change. Sweet. Sweet, I'm going for max, all right. Max attack. All right, let's get this done, Martin. Martin, are these gonna fit? And if they don't fit, what do we do? Um, I'm confident the wheels will fit. I don't know about tires, but that's why we're going to go to a tire shop yeah. and actually take the car because we could just send the wheels over there. But I think it'd be better to take the car and make sure it actually fits. Here we go, Martin. Nice. Center ball looks good. Stud pattern looks good. The only question mark is going to be the clearance to the strut. So. Here looks good on the wheel. It's how much, how big the tire is. Yeah. Because that we can't change. Well, let's go work that out at the tire shop. Michelin, who are a sponsor of Mighty Car Mods, have been absolute legends and Express sent us some tires to a local tire shop to be fitted to our new rims. We're just not sure if they'll actually fit, so that's what we need to work out. We're installing a set of Pilot Sport 5 tires, the same tires that we run on almost all of our cars back in Australia, and as far as we're concerned, the best all-round performance tire you can get. We've used these on our daily drives and we've driven hard with them on the track and always been impressed. Designed for longevity and performance, they also offer excellent wet weather braking and grip. And in Europe, you never know what weather's around the corner. We always say that the first mod you should do is wheels and tyres. And luckily in France, it's one of the only legal modifications that you can do anyway. So I did some maths on this before we came to try and work out whether 17s would fit. Now we work out whether my maths are good or bad. The problem is going to be if it hits here and here. But now we find out. The moment of truth. Oh, it fits, does it fit? No. Nope. Oh, it's so close. 10 mil. Yeah, maybe even less. Maybe even five mil. It's so close, man. Francois had thrown a few spares in the boot of his car, including some wheel spacers, which allowed us to just fit the wheels on. Only then the wheel bolts were too short for proper thread engagement. So it's looking like we'll have to roll on stock wheels, but they're so close to working and I'm determined to get these mad 17s to fit. So Yen, who runs the shop, just went to his uh, bolt box, thank you, uh, to his bolt box and dug out some Renault 
longer bolts or stud that bolts. What are they called? Wheel bolts. So just just a little bit longer. What you can see though is they're Same kind of the spacer. difference in length as the spacer, which is kind of gets us back to factory spec the way that we're thinking about it. Yeah. This is good news because the closest place that we could have gone to get some longer wheel nuts was actually auto backs, uh, which would have been a one hour round trip, but we are, we're running out of time. It's almost the end of the day and I'm not sure if we would have got there before they closed. So, um, everything's going well. It's, um, it's progress. Uh, the back is good. We introduced some bush mechanic theory to the French workshop staff to make sure we didn't get any rubbing that would damage our mad new Michelin tyres. Yeah. Something we say in Australia, we say, if it works, it works. I'm not sure if they believed us, but with the careful and gentle use of a hammer, we've managed to get our new wheels and tyres fitted to the Clio, and it looks freaking awesome. With the final torque check, we're back on the road, heading back to the driveway. We're sanding back the second-hand bonnet that we got from the wreckers so that we can give the car a bit of a legal design upgrade before the end of the day. And if you're wondering when is the end of the day in France, well right now this is what it looks like at 9.30 at night. It's literally as light as day, which maybe explains why the French eat dinner at 10pm, a good four hours after we like to chow down in Australia. With just a few euros worth of paint, we're laying on some colour before beginning our road trip to Paris first thing in the morning. Now when you think about France, you might think about French cars, but it turns out most people think about French food. Like French fries. No, more like pastries and wine and cheese. So we've come down to a boulangerie to get ourselves some breakfast. Now, not only do they have delicious pastries and things here, but it gives us an opportunity to practice our ever-expanding language of French. Bonjour. Je suis un uh, dromadaire avec gros boss. Uh, uh, grand banane. I ordered us a croissant for breakfast. But I didn't hear you say the word croissant. I did say the word croissant. The origins of the croissant date back to the 13th century and they named this because of their crescent shape. It's basically dough layered with butter, then rolled and folded to laminate the pastry. But at this boulangerie, there are all sorts of delicious treats and we're going to try as many of them as we can, ordering with my excellent French that's not so excellent. Excuse me, mademoiselle. Uh, le grand uh, tart et pomme, s'il vous plaît. Uh, ça, ça. Merci. Emporté. Une baguette selfie stick. Deux, deux baguettes selfie stick. Merci. Merci. Je suis très. Uh, C'est magnifique. So we have got a selection of famous Look French that. treats. That. We're starting with the croissant. The classic. What is a croissant? The iconic. I don't know. It's like a rolled up pastry, isn't it? Really thin, really light. Light, fluffy, buttery. And they should be. They should be have a little bit of crunch, right? Yeah, I mean. Otherwise they taste like rubbery and gross. I don't know how much cred we have in food. We did used to co-own a restaurant, but they oh. didn't have croissants. That is a good croissant and it should go everywhere. The chocolate eclair. Oh, you know sometimes like you get a big dirty donut from the servo. Mm. It's a big heavy mess. Oily this is and not, gross, not oily. Absolutely delicious. This what is have basically you got, like an apple pie. What do they call it? A something al pom? A uh... pom. I think over here an apple is called a pom and a potato is called a pom of the ground. So it's like an apple out of the dirt. This is called the pain au chocolat. Basically a mini croissant with a couple of bits of chocolate in it. And amazingly and somewhat shockingly tastes like a croissant with some chocolate in it. Now this in Australia is called a vanilla slice. Here it's called like a new fleur. I can't say the second word. Fleur, it's, fleur. it's got lots of L's and I's and F's and L's in it. And U's in it. Um, That's a classic country bakery treat in Australia. These are hard to eat, but these Oh, they're, they're making it out the back. So if you ever find yourself <laughs> in France, check out yourself a boulangerie, stick a croissant in your gob, Try a couple of these other delicious treats. We got a big day today, people. Huge day, a lot a of big travel. day. I got a very exciting email come in overnight that I'm going to share with you shortly. We got to hit the we road. We do some driving. We got some places to go. It's like midweek. It's just after peak hour. It's perfect time to hit the roads. So word has got out that Mighty Car Mods is in France, and an email has come through 
inviting us out to a Michelin restaurant tomorrow night. Now, a Michelin star rated restaurant is usually quite fancy. We are not the fanciest looking gentlemen, at least not now, but we reckon we might be able to fix that. So we're gonna go down to the Champs-Elysees, one of the most famous shopping places in the world. We're going down to Paris to go shopping for clothes. And apparently we're going on one of the most dangerous highways in the entire country. We are about to enter the ring road that goes around Paris. It used to be like a fortified wall. And then years ago, they turned it into a ring road so you could access the whole city. It's called the Peripherique, like peripheral road. Um, apparently really dangerous. Uh, not only really, really dangerous, particularly for motorbikes and scooters because they're literally lane splitting at speed. Um, quite a unique situation in that on the on-ramp, you've got a short distance to blast it to get up to speed. And then the highway has to give way to the on-ramp. So this is something that's really unnatural for us, you know, because we kind of have to do this filtering thing in Australia. With here, you blast down the on-ramp, the highway will slow down for you, hopefully, to let you in. All right, getting on to the periphery. Entering the danger zone. The roundabout we just went through was wild. No lines anywhere, cobblestones, just work it out and go. Why has everyone got their hazard lights on? What does that mean? I don't know. Are we going to do that? I don't know. Did we just send it, dude? Actually, the traffic's going to be so bad, we're not going to yeah. have to deal with the speed up to get onto the highway situation anyway, because there's just going to be traffic jams everywhere. Yeah. Consistently traffic jam for basically the whole trip, hey? All right. Well, that was a bit of a letdown. It's really full on for the sensors, you know? Cars everywhere, trucks everywhere, sirens everywhere, motorbikes, motorbikes lane splitting. Mm -hmm. Like, it's noisy, it's frantic, it's just crazy. Merge onto the Boulevard perif Periphérique. All right, we've merged and we survived. Now we stay in traffic for ages. Whoa, that was close. Excusez-moi, excusez-moi. <laughs> Merci, <laughs> mad. Paris is known as the city of love, but there's a sadder side to the city too, and that is in the rate of poverty and homelessness. Around 460,000 people live below the poverty line, and some sources suggest that over 400 homeless people die each year in the city. And as we drive towards the city, we start to see the kind of images that you don't see on postcards from Paris. There's a lot of people are begging here in Paris, and this lady here looks like she's got a little girl with her who's maybe about five years old. Bonjour, uh, les bananes pour les Petite, uh, mademoiselle. An intersection, there's just like a family of them and they, their kids and stuff walk through the traffic and ask for stuff. She's eating the banana. It's good. We've traveled only 40 kilometers in two hours. The congestion here is like a nightmare, but we're now finally entering the city that is famous for its crazy driving. So we've arrived in Paris, everybody. It is absolutely insane mayhem. trying to drive around here. It's mayhem. There's people everywhere, there's cars everywhere, there's parked cars, there's people just jumping out in the middle of the road. But it's starting to really look like Paris now. You've got cobblestone streets, you've got all the old buildings, the beautiful boulevards. It's pretty awesome. Our first stop is to try and get a glimpse of the famous Eiffel Tower, the tallest structure in Paris. Built in 1887, it's a cultural icon of France. From there, we'll be heading to the Champs-Élysées to try a hand at some French fashion. But getting around Paris in a car is slow and stressful. The window. Oh. Oh, I don't actually know where to stop. In hell, I'm through a f***ing red light. This guy. Oh, dude, look! Oh. <laughs> That's the office! I didn't notice it. Oh shit, it's right there. We didn't actually, we're about to drive underneath We it. were too busy watching the traffic, we're like, ah! And then we looked sideways and went, damn! All oh, right, okay, there it is. The traffic has been absolutely terrible. We've had tunnel vision. But we've made it to the Eiffel Tower in our little Clio. Check it out. Hey, that's so cool, we made it. Oh, dude, that was crazy. Driving right up to it. This is awesome. This is unreal, man. Whoa. Hey, that's where I nearly got mugged, right there once. Paris is very noisy. It probably seems quiet when you look at a postcard, but in real life around the Eiffel Tower, it's super noisy. The Eiffel Tower was built by Gustave Eiffel for the 1889 Exposition Universal to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. It was only intended to stay for 20 years, but this 10,000 ton structure was saved to be used for scientific experiments and to broadcast radio signals. So we're about to go around Place Charles de Gaulle. 
which used to be called like a star because it has 12 roads running off it. It's this massive, massive roundabout. It's very famous. The Arc de Triomphe is there. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is underneath it. And this roundabout is oh! famous for being chaotic. Let's oh go. My God. I, I don't know. Just go for it, dude. No, you can't. Oh, <laughs> <go. laughs> Shit! <laughs> oh, this is oh, crazy! Mousy! Excuse me, my excuse me, my mousy! You gotta make it to the middle, dude! Yeah! You did it. And there's a the chance to leave out down there, I believe. Oh, down that one we, of these. No, we need to go down that well, way. You're gonna have to do a lap. Oh, okay, wow, this is insane. So there's 12 massive Bonjour. roads that come off this Arc de Triumph, and it's a tourist attraction. As you can see, people love climbing stuff, so no doubt you can climb to the top. But it is a war memorial from the Napoleonic Wars and the French Revolution. Look at this. This is cool, man. Um, I mean, look, there's been a little bit of chaotic driving. Like in Havana and Cuba, that was pretty chaotic. This here is wild, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. I have, okay. oh, I've, there's Tesla oh, coming in I've, hot. I've seen this, um, I've seen this roundabout. I've been here before. I've touristed, but I have never driven around it. This um, is just wild. We need to go this way. Um, Two more, it's over there. Wow, this is... Whose idea was this? <laughs> Whose idea was this? No, to build a bloody roundabout with 12 roads coming in and out of it. This Here is we go, crazy. Man, this is us. Wow, we survived. Everybody, we're on the Champs of EZ. We're in Paris. So cool. Check this out. <laughs> so good. All right, let's get our clothes and get out of here. Like, this is too intense, man. <laughs> it's so intense. No matter which way you look at it, from a car, on foot, or maybe even a scooter, this central part of Paris is always cranking. There's tourists everywhere, a protest isn't all that uncommon, and last time I was here, the cops shut down half the city so the Queen of England could cruise through in her Rolls Royce. Around two million people live within the city, but there's easily another 10 million in the surrounding areas. Shopping is a huge attraction for people who travel from all over the world, and we are no exception. Only we're shopping somewhere a little more affordable. With a budget of around 10 euros each, we're going to get some fancy new rags from this French thrift store that we can wear to the Michelin restaurant tomorrow night. So we are back from a very, very long drive to Paris to get our clothes, and now we're here at a garden centre. Now you might be wondering why we are in a garden centre. We actually spotted the car park and we were on the way to the servo earlier to get some snacks and we came in and said, can we use your car park to have a meet? So we noticed there's a small car park out front and we were like, hey, this could be a place we could do a meet without having to go through all of the paperwork. So we came inside, spoke to the young bloke. He said, you'll have to speak to my dad. My dad's in the shed out the back. It turns out he said, my dad's really into cars. So we're gonna go meet him now and then if all goes well, we'll check out his cars and then there'll be a Mighty Car Mods meet in about an hour's time in the paddock behind the garden centre. In this unassuming shed behind a nursery in suburban Paris, we've stumbled onto a nirvana of vintage cars. From a Rolls Royce that was used by Charles de Gaulle through to some of the most iconic French cars of all time, this impressive collection is being preserved by Laurent Laplace, who's going to share with us what makes French cars so special and why he loves them. Alors moi, au départ, je collectionne donc toutes les voitures qui des années 30, des années 50 après. Alors c'est vraiment des voitures françaises parce qu'on est quand même en France les pionniers un petit peu de l'automobile. On parle de Citroën, donc André Citroën qui a conçu euh, l'automobile, euh, enfin qui a conçu tout au départ euh, avec la traction, avec la DS euh, qui, avait, qui faisait des caisses carrées pendant les années 30 et tout. Et c'est vrai que c'est des voitures extraordinaires, faciles d'utilisation, qui tombent jamais en panne. C'est des vrais plaisirs. Normalement ça tombe pas en panne, surtout dans les années 30, pas d'électronique, donc tout va bien. Alors le charme de la voiture française, c'est vrai qu'il y a toujours une fluidité dans la voiture. C'est vrai que les, les voitures sont toujours très très belles. Quand on est dans les années 30, tout était fabriqué à la main avec des caisses en bois, donc beaucoup de savoir-faire. Euh, et tout au long de, 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 de la fabrication, il y a eu beaucoup beaucoup de savoir-faire sur, le, sur les voitures françaises. C'est pour ça que je suis très très amateur. J'aime aussi les voitures allemandes, mais j'aime en plus le, le mieux, c'est les voitures françaises. L'âme de la voiture française, c'est 
j'allais dire, la conception du départ et la motorisation euh, où on a été vraiment euh, pionnier en la matière. Et, exactement. Et euh, quand on voit maintenant qu'il reste que, il reste que quatre, enfin, trois ou quatre marques euh, françaises, à l'époque, dans les années 30, euh, il y avait plus de 200 marques et on avait des grandes, grandes marques comme Talbot, des grandes marques comme Delage, Delahaye. C'était vraiment le fleuron de l'automobile. Et c'est vrai que de les retrouver, moi, à l'intérieur de mon musée, ça me fait toujours plaisir. Alors là, celle-ci, ça, c'est une Delage. Et euh, elle a une particularité, elle n'a pas du tout de kilomètres. Elle a 4000 km d'origine parce qu'on l'a retrouvée, elle était murée dans un château. C'est-à-dire que j'ai un architecte qui m'a appelé une fois en me disant « Laurent, on a trouvé une voiture, on a démonté le château, il y a une voiture à l'intérieur. » On s'est renseigné et donc le propriétaire de cette voiture, pour ne pas que les Allemands euh, prennent la voiture, avait muré euh, cette Delage à l'intérieur du château. Malheureusement, il a dû lui arriver malheur, elle n'a jamais été sortie. On l'a sortie il y a une vingtaine d'années avec une grue euh, par-dessus le toit du château. Elle est arrivée là, elle est neuve. Toujours sa peinture d'origine. Alors, il y a un aigle dessus, mais c'est une voiture française. C'est une Rocher Schneider, et donc c'est la plus ancienne de ma collection. Elle est de 1911, et pareil, ça c'est un ami qui m'a appelé, c'est un musée du centre de la France qui, euh, qui voulait s'en séparer, elle est arrivée là. Et euh, pour la petite histoire, il y a quelques temps, là, on a fait, j'ai fait toute la traversée de Paris avec, on a fait 120 km avec, euh, ça roule bien, ça, le moteur c'est à la manivelle, euh, les phares à l'acétylène, euh, le frein, il n'y a pas de frein au pied, c'est tout le frein à main et tout. Donc euh, là, ce n'est pas de la conduite, c'est du pilotage. Mais euh, voilà, la plus vieille, 1911. Voiture française. After checking out some of the vintage cars, we got the green light to open up the garden center to some Mighty Carmods fans in some not so vintage cars. The meet doesn't start for five minutes, there's already mad cars rocking up. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this bonjour. is epic. Uh, so how do you get a meet going in a country on the other side of the world? Yeah. Well, bonjour, bonjour. Look at this. Uh, basically what we did is we put up an Instagram post saying that uh, we could meet up here. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. Uh, doing a meet here at the garden center. Uh, and then the cars have started to arrive. We, we have uh, a meet, people. We, we have a meet. It's going to be awesome. Hey. Bonjour, ça va? Bonjour. Oh, ça oh, va look. bien, merci. Oh, les nages. I love it. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. So cool. Panda. This is awesome. Well, this is going to be a good day. I took a trip as a young and I'm running, I'm loving the freedom. I never look back. I've got the vision of singing in every nation. I land, we'll fly in a flag. I see us coming together, relax. I tell all the ops to give me the facts. Said if we bury the hatchet, uh, we building a legacy fast. I'ma start this dream in Paris. Paris, let's go. If there ain't a week that I'm running the crowd Am I really feeding the vision of life? I never lose sight, I'm living it loud I bring up the uh, bring up the level I want the max, never just settle All of this energy, I'm like a vessel Loving the travel, my foot on the pedal, hey. This legend, Sega, he, he drove over from the Netherlands and brought Stroopwafels. Like, does it get any better? He also has, and I don't know why, a whole lot of unopened Mighty Car Mods merchandise. Wow. He has so much, including Cheryl's big box which is, um, I mean, I can't show you what's inside of that because that's special. And the signed Mighty Carmine's book, what an absolute legend. I love story that might be. We wasn't supposed to happen. So much talk around us. We became numb to the yapping. It was like 05, got my license to drive. Picked you up in my pop's car, went for a ride. Couldn't no one tell us nothing. That night was ours. All the stars aligned and you were so damn fine. Yeah, it was young love. Young hearts were so pure. We trust love, it's so hard to endure. A few years passed, made the move out west. There was an awesome turnout from people all over Europe, and we even invited the lady that lent us her car. Merci beaucoup. It's a little bit awkward. Thank you. Uh, merci, merci. And, um, okay. Ça, ça va? Right love at the wrong time 
Just a little sunshine in the winter time. How you keeping warm at night? You still wear that coat I gave you. I'm doing good now, but still won't hesitate to save you. With the summer sun still shining at 9 p.m. at night, it was time for the meet to finish, and we said goodbye to every single person as they left. All those people showed up. They drove from all over. People drove from Holland, from Scotland, UK. They spent like 12 hours in Germany. the car to come here, which is so so cool. So if you were here, thank you very much. I hope you had a good time. The next morning, we were back in the Clio and back on the road. Good morning, everyone. I've got the bananas. <laughs> Last night's meet was freaking awesome. It for all so of those good. people that came from France, Germany, UK, Serbia, for people that drove Portugal. for like a couple of days. Portugal. Thank you so much for coming. It was awesome. Unreal. And someone gave me their CD. We're going to listen to this today. And Thank a sticker, which says, caution, this vehicle converts money into noise. Oh, that's basically that's true. Everything I own. It's time now, though, for the adventure to continue. Where are we off to? Well, Michelin, who is a sponsor of Mighty Car Mods, has invited us to the 24 hour of Le Mans race. Fun fact Michelin is French. Is it? That's where they're from. They're from here. And so they said, <laughs> come to the race. We're like, okay. So uh, we are heading there now. We've got dinner tonight at a proper Michelin restaurant where we'll be able to use the. Uh, fancy clothes we bought yesterday and you may have been wondering as we've been driving along how did my French get so good well I'm here to reveal the secret people I've been reading one two three La Pin by Celine Claire and Ella Chabon this is a kids book and you might think that that sounds kind of like crazy but this is how you learn it's like working. this is how you learn things um, it's working okay I wouldn't say it's working great we're heading to Chartres, which is around 100 kilometers southwest of France and halfway to Le Mans. We're going to be spending the night here before making our way to the race tomorrow. Chartres is most famous for its enormous cathedral, which was built in 1194 and is built on the same site as previous cathedrals that were built here in the 4th century. But just like any good car project, it's had lots of mods since then. We've been asked to dress up for our Michelin dinner, so it's time to see just how far we can stretch 10 euros in the elite high art world of French fashion. The latest fashion from France. Modern, timeless, classic. Explore the world. Explore yourself. Perennium Falcon. We are Perennium Falcon. <laughs> that was pretty weird, dude. That's so weird. I'm really hungry. You ready for food? Let's use our book. We got our Michelin book. Let's go. Dinner dude, time. That escalated very quickly and very strangely. I'm not getting changed. Though. I liked the music, though. It that sounded good. Excellent. The Michelin guidebooks have been published by the French tyre company Michelin since the year 1900. The guides were invented at the dawn of the automobile era to help fuel demand for cars and therefore tyres. Two brothers, André and Edouard Michelin, created the guide. Our entree, three Doritos and a gelatinous ball of oyster meat. The brothers probably didn't feed each other oysters, but they did compile a guide full of maps, hotels, fuel stops and of course restaurants which were rated. Readers could find exceptional cuisine with one, two or three Michelin stars and then use their cars and of course their tyres to take a road trip to visit these restaurants. Basically exactly what we're doing now in our little Renault over 120 years later. Inside this egg is another egg covered in jelly. I honestly have no idea what this is. That's a plate of cheese. And someone's pouring a chocolate milkshake onto this very elaborate biscuit. And this thing, you're probably meant to eat it with a spoon. But in all honesty, we're used to eating corner store kebabs and this food is so fancy, we don't really know what it is or what we're meant to do with it. The next day, we hit the road again, only this time for a slightly different Michelin experience. We're going to Le Mans.
This is the world's most famous endurance race. It starts at 4 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon and a team of drivers race flat out for 24 hours straight on a circuit that is 13.6 kilometers long. It began as far back as 1923, and so this year marks the 100th anniversary, giving racing fans even more of a reason to descend upon this small French town. People travel here from all over Europe and the entire world to experience the race, camping out in tents or motorhomes, on the side of the road, or many not sleeping at all to witness the event. So after 30 hours on a plane and a few days in the Renbro, we have arrived at Le Mans, and the weird thing is there's nobody here. It's just empty. Uh, actually, it's completely nuts. There's fans everywhere, there's race cars everywhere. It is an absolute festival atmosphere. It's very, very cool. There's a lot of different smells coming from a lot of different cuisines that were consumed in different countries over the last couple of days. Uh, but we're now going down to the grid walk uh, with a lot of other people. Bonjour. 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 Yeah, to check out some cars, yeah, check out some drivers. Va, it's just pumped. This is a, a pretty uh, exciting and unique experience to be able to do this. So pretty excited about it. Hello. Uh, Bonjour. 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 Oui, merci. Uh, thank you very much. So anyway, uh, yeah, it is bigger than anything I've ever seen before in the car automotive world. It's absolutely insane. We're going to give you a bit of a look around Le Mans. Um, go and check it out for ourselves for the first time. It's very exciting. Come with us. The race starts in like two hours. It does. Two exactly. hours. It's going to be yep, loud. It's going to be wild. It's going to be hectic. Welcome to Le Mans 2023, the 100th anniversary. We got hooked up with a couple of tickets to walk the grid before the start of the race. So we grabbed our baguette selfie sticks that are now microphones and hit the track. To get in here you meant to have this security pass. Being we're in France I'm going to hide it and see if I can get in with a baguette instead. Let's see how we go everyone. I'm holding up my baguette to the sky and I'm wandering in and so far nobody has stopped me. There you go everybody. You do not need to get a pass. All you need is a baguette. Uh, and uh, where's, oh, we're well, sorry, we're still over there. So we're going right now out onto the grid. The grid wall. Uh, and um, again, the baguette is the only thing that you know. Oh, he's been checked. It's been checked. There you go. You actually need one after all. Security did their job. The grid walk is an excellent opportunity to bump into some racing drivers as well as some of the people working on the race teams who are usually scrawled away in the pit garage trying to make their car survive the race. All right, I'm here with Calvin. Calvin, what do you do here, man? Uh, I'm the assistant program manager for Cadillac Racing. Oh, wow. That's like a that's a big, big job. Uh, it's, it's up there. It's up there. I get to come to all the races. I got to help support the teams out here, so I'm, I'm happy. And can you give me like a short rundown of what you guys are doing here with Cadillac? Uh, we're coming here to win. We brought three cars and there's three podium spots so it seems like a very nice fit to me so we're trying to go one two three today so the u.s is trying to win them all of course of course <laughs> we're trying to win them all with our with our cadillacs and then with our corvette as well awesome man well i hope it goes well for you thank you very much have a good day you as well Winning Le Mans is a big deal, and winning it on the 100th anniversary even more so. There's a huge focus on endurance and preserving the various car systems like brakes and tyres so you can maximise your time on the track. The cars are lightweight, agile, and at this point, we're only 60 minutes from the start of the race. The grid walk has been absolutely nuts. There's just people everywhere, mad cars everywhere too. Uh, it's absolutely insane. Everybody loves the baguette like this they gentleman do. over here. Uh, but they must now be hungry. we've got to clear out because the race is is about to begin in one hour and then these cars and their drivers will be going round and round and round for 24 hours. The winner will not be whoever goes the fastest, the winner will be whoever can get the most distance done in that time which is 24 hours. There's a noticeable shift in mood just before the race begins as people are ushered out of the way and the race officials begin their preparations. This is a serious race and it can also be dangerous. In the past, there's been numerous fatalities, both drivers and spectators. Toyota's Gazoo Racing have taken victory for the last five years, but this year, Ferrari are keen to try and get their first victory since 1965 with a factory-backed team also in contention for the win. And now the 2023 24 Hour of Le Mans has officially begun.
I'm here with Kieran from TF Sport. They're running a bunch of cars. Tell me a bit about what you guys do. Uh, so basically, I'm one of the number two mechanics on the LMP2 car. Uh, we unfortunately had a DNF due to a, an issue. We had a, an upright failure on the car. Suspension uh, failure? Suspension failure, basically, yeah. So, uh, a bit of hard luck. Put, fit, a new, fit a new one onto the car, went back out. Two laps later, come back in, we had the same issue. So Broke uh, again. Yeah. Bit, is this part the same on all cars? Yeah, so each LMP2 car is exactly the same. They're all homologated to what they are. We can't really do anything to the car to help it too much with anything that breaks. Uh, we have to tune the setup to as much as we possibly can yeah. to basically allow for it to help through the corners, everything which helps it prevent it from breaking and anything. So uh, if someone who's just finished school wants your job, what do they have to do? My best suggestion is to do is go and do club events, do it free. Because that's the only way you're going to get experience to move up through the chain. Yeah. Like as, as soon as if you're a go-karter, help with mechanicing on go-karts and move up to club racing, as small low races as you can, and you'll slowly get your progression up and up and up. Yeah. That's that's what most of us do. Like, well, I started in a road car garage. I did four years of doing helping people for free, and then slowly managed to get into being paid for it, which is great. I loved it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, nice awesome to meet you. Thank you very much. Man. The actual racetrack facility with the pit garages only makes up part of the entire track used for this race. Many public roads are closed and the cars are flying past people's front doors at over 300 kilometres an hour. While the pit area itself is flooded with people, there's hundreds of thousands more people at vantage points all around the town itself. All right, it's time to talk tyres, people. Of the 62 cars that are out there right now doing the 24 hour Le Mans race, 37 of them are running Michelin. So, they obviously need a lot of stock and a lot of people to change the tyres. There's 101 staff here, so that's like engineers, fitters, techs to work on the tyres. And they bring in 8,000, yes, 8,000 tyres to run on the cars during the race. It's around 1,600 square metres and this is like Michelin Tyre Central. It's absolutely madness. Many manufacturers bring out their classic cars to the event and Michelin is no exception. More than ever, motorsport is a testing ground to push the limits of what's possible. These days, there's a focus on environmental issues and the challenge to create sustainable tyres so as the world changes, the racing can remain. They've highlighted it as race for change and performance made to last. And for the sake of this epic race, we really hope it does. At the end of the 24 hours, Ferrari took the win, ending Toyota's winning streak, who came in second, with Cadillac in third. We had only 48 hours to get our car ready to get to Le Mans, and now we've got just 12 hours to get our little Renault back to Paris and then get on a 30-hour plane trip back to Australia. The Renault Clio is not the best or the fastest car we've ever driven, but it never missed a beat and it unlocked a truly authentic French experience for us, which opened the road up to meeting new people and getting to experience the kindness of strangers. Experiences that will last a lifetime. From the fully blown Le Mans race car to the cheapest Renault nugget you can find, there's a story in every car and there's adventures down every road. French cars do have a mixed reputation, but being in France, we think we're a little bit closer to understanding their appeal. The real question is, which country do we go to next?